Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. And if this is your first time here, welcome. I am so happy to have you here. My name is Tara and my YouTube channel name is The Planting Bug. So I did do a part one for plant care beginners and this is part two. In part one, uh, go back and watch that. Um, I will have it up here in the cards or up here, wherever <laughs> wherever it shows up. But um, go back and watch that if you are brand new to plants and a little bit worried or if you feel like you can't keep plants alive. I did a part one that just shows you how easy it is to start because I used to think that I couldn't care for plants and now here we are. I have 70 plus plants and um, have been pretty successful at keeping most of them alive. Of course, not every plant can live. But anyway, so I now am doing a part two. This is just a more in-depth um, explanation of how you start to care for your plants once you start owning more than a couple of plants in your home um, and in your plant collection. And if you have not seen yet on my channel, I have done a plant tour of all the plants that I own. It was in three parts because again, I have so many plants. I will have those down below in my description box. So go and watch all of those if you wanna see all the plants that I own. Um, and if you have any questions on any of the plants, let me know, I'd be happy to answer. I never claim to be an expert. I just like to share um, what works for me and what has worked best on my plant journey, which has been now for over two years. Um, so anyway, let's jump right into this video. I hope you enjoy. So in the first video, it was just very basic, very beginner's guide. I basically, I'm not gonna go through it all again, but it was me explaining that you really don't need to go out and buy any products to care for your plants. And that is very true for quite a few months. Um, so what I have in my part one tips um, for beginners is um, very basic and you can do that for months, even maybe up to a year. But when you start incorporating a lot more plants in your home like I have, um, it is nice to kind of have some tips, some tricks and some tools to kind of help you manage that many plants. Um, so I'm gonna jump in and kind of show you what I have, what works for me and give you the best plant care tips that I have. So in my part one video, I did explain a lot about just how to figure out how to water your plants. Um, I wanna get into a little bit more detail and kind of show you a couple of methods that I do to water. I'll show you a little bit of footage, um, but I, that will bring up the very first thing that um, I recommend getting is these uh, watering trays. Um, these honestly are just little saucers that you put at the bottom of your plants um, especially if you have your plants still in the nursery pot and they leak out the side and you don't want them getting on your shelves, you just, this is a protection. But I use these to water my plants. And so let's jump into a video right now that kind of shows you how I do that. And then these two needed to be watered, but I wanted to show you one technique that I do. Um, and I don't do this <clears throat> all the time and I have showed it on past videos but I really wanted to kind of talk to you guys about bottom watering. Um, I have found it very beneficial and noticed a huge difference in my plants when I started water, bottom watering them. Um, you get any type of like a tray or a, a dish um, and fill it with water, you know, kind of halfway up the tray. And then you put each plant inside here and I will let this sit for a few hours. If you come back and you notice that all the water has evaporated, first of all, that's a really good sign because it means the plant was thirsty and it's really, the water's going up. Um, you know, and also it is really important you don't just stick any plant in there. You, you wanna make sure that it is a plant that has well draining holes. Most of my plants, I would say 90% of my plants are still in the nursery pots. And when I repot them, I repot them again in nursery pots. Um, I just feel like they're very, very beneficial to grow a plant in. And then all of the cute decorative pots, this is my basil plant, but this is an example. All of my decorative pots, I usually don't plant my plants in there. Um, I, I stick them in. This is, I guess it's a bad example because this is kind of big, but anyway, you can put a cute pot, decorative pot, on the outside and then have your nursery pot inside and it just makes things a lot cuter. 
But anyway, so these are gonna bottom water. Um, you know, you could leave them an hour, um, but I really, there's some days I leave them here for four hours. And then you kind of come back and you'll pick them up. Like this one's a see-through one. You can see it's already, the soil's gotten wet to about there. So it's just really beneficial to have it take its time go through and water the whole entire soil all the way up to the top and you know it's getting a really good thorough watering. Um, it is also good once in a while to water the plant, top water it, um, because then it kind of flushes out any anything bad that's gotten in the soil. So it is good to do that also. But like I said, probably about twice a month, I bottom water um, and I have found really good benefits with it. And then the next thing that I use quite a bit is this spray bottle. I have two spray bottles. Um, one of them is just water. And I go around and I mist my plants just every once in a while. But let me tell you, misting your plants is not like 100% crucial. Plants do love humidity and you wanna try to mimic the environment that they grow in, which is usually outdoors, it's usually tropical. Um, so the, a plant growing indoors um, with just the temperatures of your home works great for house plants that are tropical plants. Um, but to mist your plants every once in a while kind of simulates it raining, which in the wild, you know, it rains. So it's nice to kind of add that humidity, that moisture onto your plants every once in a while. So I've got one spray bottle that is just water. And then I have another spray bottle. It kind of helps you in the measures of trying not to get bugs on your plants, which is kind of a bummer. Um, when you start to own a lot of plants, and it probably took a good year before I started noticing like fungus gnats. They're those little gnats that you see if like fruit starts to go bad in your house. Um, and <laughs> if anybody owns plants, you'll know. I mean, I remember laying in bed with my husband and having our cell phones on and gnats flying across the screen because they're attracted to light. Um, that was one of the first signs that, okay, fungus gnats have arrived. Um, and they really can become a problem, but just pests, um, bugs in general can get on the leaves of your plants. There's a lot of reasons why that happens just naturally, um, but there are ways to kind of protect that. I've done many videos explaining this. Uh, number one thing you can do to protect it is just once in a while, maybe twice a week, check the leaves of your plants when you're watering them. Look at the backs of the leaves, look at the front of the leaves, just see if any little bugs, and they're really hard to see by just the human eye, um, but they're really hard to see, but you'll just notice these little white fuzzy things or black fuzzy things. A lot of times they don't even move, but you definitely can tell that they're not supposed to be there. Um, but one way to kind of protect in doing that, like I said, is to dust your leaves, check your leaves when you are watering your plants, but then also, um, when you spray, this is, I have another spray bottle that you fill up with water and then you put a few drops of neem oil in there and then you put a few drops of this pure Castile soap. Um, the two together kind of helps them blend with the water and um, you can spray your plants and that these kind of give a protection on the leaves to kind of help keep those pests away. Um, so I did do a video just recently, it's probably like two videos back, where a couple of my plants were infested with mealybugs. A lady actually told me that she thought they were spider mites, but I haven't had a ton of issues with bugs, so I could be wrong, but to me they looked like mealybugs because they were white and fuzzy. But anyway, I treated them right now. Um, I still keep an eye on those two plants that were infested and I'm constantly carrying and making sure they're not coming back. But this is kind of like a good um, protection in trying to keep those bugs away. Um, but you definitely wanna just look at your leaves every once in a while. Don't just assume that they're okay and don't have bugs on them because once a plant gets infested, it is pretty devastating and can move on to your other plants. So this little concoction here can help in aiding in that uh, keeping pests away. Then I also have this, this is just pure alcohol. I don't spray it on my plants, it's just in this container. Um, but if you get pests um, and you treat it with the neem oil and the soap concoction uh, spray, then what you do, and I showed this in that video, I'll go ahead and link it here, um, but you go ahead and you dip 
a Q-tip in alcohol and then you um, have to individually remove all of those bugs. That's kind of what kills them and can wipe them and get them off your plant. So I do keep some alcohol and some Q-tips nearby. Again, really quickly wanted to talk to you about dusting your leaves. Um, when you dust your leaves, I try to do it two, three times a month. Um, where you dust them, you can do it with a microfiber cloth, you can do it with a uh, paper towel or any type of uh, rag in your house. Uh, but I have found it best that a microfiber cloth works the best in just getting any dust off the leaves because your, your leaves do get really dusty. Um, and you really kind of, it's important for the plant to get that dust off. Number one, it helps keep the bugs away. And number two, it helps the sunlight get into the leaves and it helps the plant grow better. And then while we're on the subject of bugs, going back to those annoying fungus gnats, um, these I just got on Amazon. They're just little sticky traps for the fungus gnats. Um, let me grab one. So you remove, you know, the little film on it. And uh, wow, this one's got a big bug on it. Um, but as you can see, it starts to fill up with those little those little gnats, um, and it works really good. I've noticed a big difference in the amount of gnats that are in my house, um, and I'm the type of person, when I see gnats or bugs, I get itchy, <laughs> so I need to do whatever I can to kind of keep the pests down in my house. So these are awesome. Um, I also have these, they kind of stick into the plant, and then these little sticky things stick in there. But these again i just got on amazon they were super cheap and they work great. okay let's quickly talk about fertilizer i'm not going to go too into detail because it is probably an area in my plant care that i need to improve on um, but you can buy these little sticks um, they are just miracle grow fertilizer they're just an all-purpose fertilizer for plants and then you just stick these into the soil of your plant. I do like one or two of these sticks. Stick it inside the soil and then when you water it, this starts to disintegrate and it gives the plant fertilizer. That is what I have used on my plants for the most part. Um, again, I'm trying to um, get better with my fertilizer. I'm so afraid that I'm gonna do it wrong and I'm gonna end up killing my plants. So to me, if you're nervous like me, this is the safe route to go. At least I'm fertilizing, um, but I know that there is a better method. And I have done research and there is this liquid dirt. This is a fertilizer that I've heard amazing things about and I am in the process. I haven't even opened it up yet, I just got it. So I'm in the process of learning how to use this because it is like a concentrated powder and then you mix it like within a milk jug and then just every time you water, you add just a little bit into your plants or I don't know, like I said, I'm still looking into it. But this is gonna be the fertilizer that I use. And once I feel comfortable, I will do a video and show you guys how this works and how I feel about it. Okay, so in the first video, I did talk to you a lot about the pots that you keep your plants in. And I'm just gonna bring this up one more time really quickly. I think that it is really important, by the way, this is my, uh, Calathea orbifolia, isn't she absolutely gorgeous? One of my favorite plants. Definitely not a plant that I would recommend to beginners. Um, this is one that I would wait maybe a year. Just work with the easy plants first and then go on to these. Um, but I did bring up really quickly, or I'm gonna bring up now, but I did bring up in my first part, um, the last video that I did, that I personally like to grow my plants in nursery pots. So I bring a new plant home from the nursery, I keep it in the nursery pot, and I allow the plant to grow in this. I never, well, never say never, I hardly ever will replant a plant just into a decorative plant. And the reason for that is decorative plants don't have the best drainage. You can definitely drill holes and make it work but for me, it's just so much easier to take this pot out, this plant out, water it, make sure the water's evaporating out of the well draining holes, which is also a tip, a really, really important tip 
is make sure all your pots, even if you choose to put it in a decorative pot, make sure it's got really good drainage holes because you want to avoid root rot. You wanna make sure all the water is draining out of the pot and then you're putting it either, you know, back on the shelf or back in the decorative pot um, because you never want a plant to be sitting in water that's just sitting at the bottom. That will cause root rot. That is one of the number one killers of plants that people buy. Big mistake I feel like people make is um, just not paying attention to what's at the bottom of their pots, allowing it to sit in water and then it dies and they have no idea why. <laughs> so, like I said, water it, let it drain, then put it back in the decorative pot. So that's why I think it's really important to just allow the plant to grow in the nursery pot that it comes in. It's also very detrimental to the plant to just bring it home from the nursery, repot it into a brand new pot. Just like I said in my last video, it's really important to get plants acclimated to your homes. But speaking about plants, um, another thing that I buy and have on hand all the time is just more nursery pots. You can buy these at Lowe's, Home Depot, or like if you buy plants to plant outdoors, they come in these, you take them out, you plant them in the ground, and then I keep them. For instance, you know, these are pots that came in other plants. I've got all different sizes. So it goes on and on and on. So every time I decide to repot or say that I'm doing a propagation, I've got pots around my house to do those in. Even little teeny tiny ones, look how cute those are. <laughs> Okay, and now I'm gonna to talk to you about what I have on hand for my soil. I may do a video for you guys that shows kind of the ratio of how I put my soil together. But for new plant beginners, you can honestly just buy like a miracle Grow potting mix. Um, you wanna to try to make sure it's a well draining. So I look for fast draining. Um, just, you know, it's just better. So this is the, uh, potting mix that I buy, but then I also put perlite in it that again helps a plant uh, soil not be too moist. And then I also use earthworm castings also for my fertilization, but also to plant with. And then I add, it's a orchid bark is basically, it's like a potting mix for orchids, but I mix, this is basically how I make my potting soil. Um, I'm probably pretty low, but I keep them in this container here. Yeah, I'm very low, but normally this is filled up so that if I feel like I need to repot a plant, I've got this on hand, ready to go. That's my mixture right there that I just put together myself. And so far it has worked really well. As you can see, you can just do it with a spoon. I keep a spoon in there, um, but most recently I did buy these little nifty scoops um got them on amazon for super cheap and this is kind of what they look like and the reason why i like them is they've got this narrow neck right here so it's really easy to scoop the soil and then you can kind of put it around the edges of the plant it's just so much easier than using a spoon so these are super cheap you can find them on amazon and um, yeah i've really enjoyed having them then when it comes to repotting, we just talked about soil. Um, it's nice to have like a tray. I actually plan on buying a plastic one, but this is kind of, I use this or these little trays right here, like this bigger one here. You know, if I'm going to like say repot this little uh, spider plant, I'm gonna use a tray like that to remove it and allow the spillage of the dirt to be in here. Um, or like I said, in a tray, which I use this quite a bit. Um, and that way you're not making a mess. But I've also used just a garbage bag. <laughs> but something like this is just nice to have around. I just like to keep all this in my garage so it's really easy to grab. I've got lots of extra pots. Um, and then when you start to propagate, um, I've got this rooting powder, which is great to kind of dip the fresh cut stems in before you add it to water. I've got this cute little propagation station that you can kind of put small little plant cuttings in and allow roots to grow um, of your propagations. I think that's so cute. I also got this on Amazon, but honestly, you can do it in a glass. Let me show you. Okay, and coming into my office here, um, 
I just recently did some fresh cuttings on my Monstera Deliciosa and I wanted to show you, I put the propagation just in my husband's beer mug. So you don't really have to go out and buy propagation stations. You can just use what is in your home. Um, but I just kind of wanted to give you an example of what I put propagations in. And then coming into here, I just wanted to show you also these cute little, I just got these at um, Hobby Lobby, but little things like this are great to put propagations in um, also. And I just have these kind of around my plants at all times. Let me explain to you really quickly why, but as you'll notice, I've got this sitting here. I've got one back there. I've also got another one sitting here and I fill them up with water. There's another one back there. I fill those up with water. So like I said, I fill little containers like this up with water. I leave them sitting on the shelves around my plants. And what this does is water just slowly evaporates into the air. It evaporates into your plants and it just adds a higher level of humidity. Plants do love humidity. If you go into any nursery, you notice that the humidity levels are much higher than a household. So I just do any little tricks that I can. And I have noticed that this helps quite a bit. You can also place uh, pebble trays around your plants on shelves. I'll show you a picture of here what that looks like. I personally have not done that yet. Um, I plan on doing that soon because I know that it would help. But right now, just the little teeny jars that I have sitting around that I just showed you, I feel like work really well. There are times that I walk by my plants and I can see little teeny like drips of water sitting on like the tips of my plant that are right by these water containers. And I haven't put any humidity, I haven't sprayed them recently, but the leaves every once in a while will have a little bit of mist or mild, not mildew, oh my gosh, they'll have a little bit of humidity on them from just those uh, little tray or little jars sitting around them. So I know that it does help. And then another thing that I do use quite a bit is just a humidifier. This, these humidifiers are super cheap. Um, so I have these kind of all throughout my house. Um, I probably try to turn these on my plants, I would say three times a week. On a bad week, I've only done it once. Every once in a while I'll forget, but anytime that I can, I just go ahead and turn this on, let it humidify onto my plants, maybe an hour and then I turn it off. I try not to overdo that because I definitely don't wanna create like mildew or fungus on the plants, but just every once in a while, it's really nice for a plant to get some nice moisture from the humidifier. So I feel like that is enough um, to kind of share with you, to show you additional steps, tricks, products that I use to care for my plants. Um, so between the part one and the part two, I feel like that's a really good start to kind of beginner plant owners to kind of see things that I do that have helped me be successful in um, caring for over 70 plants and for the most part, keeping them all alive. Um, like I said, just start out with one or two plants, follow my steps in part one. And then in this part two video that I just did, when you start to have multiple plants of like 10 or 20, um, then start maybe incorporating some of these tricks that I just showed you um, to kind of help you um, further be successful in your plant journey. So like I said, if I can do it, you guys can do it too. I hope that this was helpful to you. Let me know down in the comments below if you have any further questions for me, I'd be happy to try and answer. Again, I do not claim at all to be an expert. I am just sharing with you what has worked for me along my journey in plant care because I just love plants so much. Um, I hope you guys too. I hope that if you are scared to own a plant, you will take these tips and tricks from part one and part two and just go for it. Just try it out. I promise you can do it. So I hope you guys enjoyed. I hope it was helpful. If you have not subscribed to my channel yet, I'd love to have you become part of my plant family. So stick around and hit that red subscribe button down below. Turn on the notification bell so you're notified each and every time I upload and I will be back soon. Okay guys, I'll let you go. Have a great weekend. I'll talk to you soon. Bye.